friends, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge, and I've got another French knife for you. This comes from knivesoffrance.com, which is a knife store in the United States, but this knife was made in France by Osabo, which is a small knife company, it's a small business, literally a handful of people that hand make classic knives in the French style of regional knives. This is the Vendetta. The Vendetta is a style of knife that isn't actually originally French. It's Corsican from the island of Corsica, which France now owns. They've been owning it for a couple hundred years, I guess. Uh, the design probably predates French running of Corsica. Corsica's got a culture a little bit like Italian, actually a fair bit like Italian. And yeah, this knife does have a little bit of an Italian kind of look to it. We know what vendetta means in English, right? So yeah, the vendetta. You've got quite a notch here for your fingers, so you could use this for puncturing. Just be careful that you don't put pressure on the spine of the blade while you're puncturing because it's a slip joint knife, the classic kind of slip joint knife. Mine's got bone on the handle here. You can also get it with horn from Knives of France. They also have a more classic stamp steel style version. This is $59 before your discount. You save 10% when you shop at knivesoffrance.com as long as you spend $50 and use my coupon code CC and that'll get you 10% off. 12C27 by Sandvik is the steel on here and we've got a full flat grind. We've got some milling on the uh, back spring here. That's enough talking from far away. Let's get to the tabletop and take a good close look at this thing. Keep watching. This is a full-sized folder. Let's do a size comparison with the Ontario Rat one. And you can see it's almost that size of a knife. We've got uh, more of a cutting edge. Well, actually, no, it's almost identical. That tells you something about the size of this knife. Let's talk about this blade first. Drop point blade here. Uh, it's most of the thickness of the blade until about here. So the last inch is where it starts coming. It comes down a little bit before that, but the biggest transition is about the last inch down to a thin tip. And then we've got just a little bit of a belly, mostly a straight edge blade. Satin finish that's been lightly polished. And uh, this has been hand ground. So when you rub your hand along the back here, there's a little bit of a transition point right there that you can feel. It's not just a perfect arc. And that's, yeah, like I said, they hand make these knives. They're not mass produced by big machines like Chinese knives. This is made by machines and just assembled by humans. Unlike this knife. This knife, every step of it, it's sort of a handmade process. And it shows. It's not perfect. Like the grinding and everything on it is not 100% perfect. There's no sharpness soil on these knives. It says 12C27 on the Ricasso right there. You can't see it totally, but uh, let's see if I put it on the half stop. You can see it says 12C27 and Sandvik right there. Of course, friction is starting to rub some of that off, but there it is. And on this side, it says Lissabo, France. And over here, it's got the Corsican headgear and Vendetta in a script. On this side, you can see the point where the pivot pin went in. So you can just see the outline of that. On this side, you can't see it as clearly, but it's there as well. I'm not even sure if they've got washers in between there or not because I've not taken one of these apart because I'd have to I'd have to basically wreck it to take it apart and then I'd have to rebuild it. I'm just not into rebuilding knives. I'm not a knife maker. So I don't quite have that skill set. But that's what it is. So the back spring closes halfway. You can see the spring comes up here. It works just like a lockback knife except for there's no lock engagement on the tang of the blade. It's just a spring tension. So when it's open, that spring holds on the back of the tang and wants to keep the knife in the open position. So you start to close it, it wants to stay open. That's a strong back spring that they've got there. This knife doesn't have exactly a half stop. It's got a third stop right there. It's not a perfectly flat section that meets with this back spring. It's just sort of a section there. So it does wiggle a little bit, but it wants to stop there. And then you've got to put the pressure on it again to close it the rest of the way. You can see that spring coming back quite a bit further. And then the spring starts pulling it closed. And if you just let it slam closed, 
you're going to dent up the edge of your blade because there's no stop system on the tang of the blade here to stop it from closing all the way. There's a little bit of something right there, but it's not it's not designed to 100% always protect your edge. So use two hands to close the blade when you want to close the knife, and you'll keep that edge in good shape for a much longer time. The handle shape, this handle is kind of cool. It's really designed as a finger guard right there. That way, like I said, you can puncture with it. You can stab with this knife if you want to. As long as you're always, you know, pushing the edge of the blade, you know, into whatever you're doing as well. It's, don't stab straight. Stab sort of on an angle like that, and it'll go in, and it'll be safe. We've got rounded steel here. It's rounded over right there, so they just grinded this on a belt or whatever to make it all nice and smooth. And you can see that it was hand-finished. It's not perfect. Then, over here, you can see this piece of steel. It matches quite good on that side, but the bolster on this side doesn't match exactly with the liner. That's just part of what it is to make a $59 knife by hand. It's not going to be perfect. Uh, this company makes higher-end knives as well. Le Sabo makes, you know, more expensive ones. Those will be made to higher tolerances, and uh, you won't see these minor imperfections like you do right there and right there. This guy's got some file work. I'm not sure exactly how they did it, on that back spring. You can see those kind of inverted check marks, a couple of lines straight across, and it's just that sort of pattern going back and forth along the back. Does it offer much for texture, for grip or anything? No, not really. You can feel it, but it doesn't really offer any grip. And then on the back here, you know, the bolster ends halfway down the handle, maybe a little bit more, and then we've got bone. Pinned on in three places, this piece of bone, and it's 100% natural bone. It's real bone, probably cattle bone because they also make horn. It makes sense that they would buy their bone supplies and their horn supplies from the same kind of people, but not necessarily. It might be sheep bone. I don't know, but I'm thinking it's probably cattle bone. And you can see some imperfections on it. Smoothed all around, you know, the edges smoothed and polished, quite comfortable. Like I said, you can also get this in horn. They probably have other materials as well. Knivesoffrance.com just has the bone and the horn and that Vendetta Duke style knife as well. The alignment, it's slightly off. It's not right down the middle, a little bit to this side. How well does it cut? I haven't talked about that yet. Well, I was talking about how well it punctures and things. It actually cuts very well because it's very thin. This steel is nice and thin. It's not designed for, you know, chopping into hardwood or anything dumb like that. For this knife, it would be dumb anyways. For other knives, maybe not. But for this knife, that would be a dumb move. This is designed for cutting through soft materials like flesh. It's sharpened okay. Not great, but it's sharpened okay. And it slices good. It uh, cuts good. And it punctures fairly well. I'll talk about the grind angles and all those other things, all the measurements and all those specs right after we get back. Let's go over all the specs on this thing. It's 95 grams, 3.35 ounces. Not bad. The sharpness from the factory, 235 bass. Yeah, that's not great. It's okay though. The cutting edge length, 83.5 millimeters, 3.29 inches. Blade length, tipped to the closest spot on the handle, 87.1 millimeters, 3.43 inches. The thickness of the blade stock, 2.42 millimeters, 0 0.096 of an inch, so just a hair under a tenth of an inch. The blade depth is biggest, right about where my fingertips are, 17.4 millimeters, 0.69 of an inch. How thick is it behind the grind? Measured in three places, the average is 0.28 millimeters, 11 thousandths of an inch. Yeah, that really helps it to be very slicey and cutty, and even quite stabby. The grind angles. This side's got an average of 21.9 degrees. This side, 16.9 degrees. This side is 16.8 for more than three quarters of the knife. And then at the tip here, it's 17.4 degrees. That's 0.6 degrees of variation, so quite well sharpened. 
This side start at 20.5, 22.3, 23.1, 2.6 degrees of variation. So that's quite a bit better than the average knife that I review. More of the measurements, the handle length, 114.3 millimeters, four and a half inches on the nose. The grip area between my thumbs, a little under nine centimeters, just under three and a half inches. The thickness of the handle, it's thickest right at the back here. You can see how it's tapering. 14.3 millimeters, 0.56 of an inch. The handle depth, this way, it's widest again, right at the end, 17.4 millimeters, 0.68 of an inch. When the knife is closed, the widest point is right here, right over the title, the name of it, Vendetta, 23.4 millimeters, 0.92 of an inch. And the total length of this knife, 201 millimeters, let's round it a little bit, 7.91 inches. If you're looking for a knife like this, or you just want any kind of older historical kind of knife, and you think maybe some knives from France are kind of the thing that you might be looking for, check out their website, knivesoffrance.com. This is the lower budget, They're not the lowest, this is the lower budget stuff. And I like it, it's made quite well. One of my viewers told me uh, when I first reviewed one of the knives from France, and he, I, told, I, I told all you guys that I was looking for some French knives, he wrote to me and told me to get the Vendetta. So I finally have one, and I can see why he likes it. It's a nice knife. The flat back, you've always got it indexed on your thumb, so you know exactly which way the edge is. It's fairly comfortable. Everything's soft and rounded while still being sturdy. 12C27, yeah, it's an okay budget steel. It's a nice slip joint knife. I'm quite liking it anyways. So if you're in the market for one of these, check the links down below and you can get one for yourself. Thank you everyone who supports my channel financially, either through Patreon or through YouTube memberships. I appreciate your help very much. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Even if you're just commenting for the algorithm's sake, I thank you so much for leaving any comment at all. It really does help. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.